This is the P700 printer from Epson and I'm going to be showing the basic setup process. So taking it out of the box, putting some ink into it and connecting it up to a network or a computer or even a phone. But what I would say is that when you set this up, if you get any more questions, there's a much more detailed article on the Northlight website which covers the setup. Uh, it's got some screenshots and a few more bits and pieces, but this is uh, just a few of the basic steps in what you do to set it up. It doesn't take very long, um, not difficult to do, but you do have to do the right things for it. The uh, box is easy enough to open. Open these tabs and uh, a little message waiting for us from Epson. Mm, we shall see. Open this one up. Basically in the top here, all there is, is a black box. And the black box has inks in it, along with a little welcome note. A start here guide. Now what I would say is that the inks themselves are actually arranged in this box in the order that you put them in. So leave them in the box. Don't take them out and sort them out yet. But uh, there we go, that's what we get. The simple guide to inserting ink cartridges, a few other bits and pieces, and a little guide. And what do we have here? Ah, the CD printing. And this is the first of rather a lot of little bits of plastic you'll find. Uh, we haven't even got to the tape yet. Uh, this is the CD and DVD guide. Also in the box we have a mains lead, some more cardboard, some polystyrene. These bits of polystyrene worth keeping obviously just in case you ever have to send it back. And then we get to the printer itself. Here's the printer itself out the box. Um, don't lift the printer by the bag. It's not designed to be used that way. Um, it is, like everything else, stuck together with a lot of tape. Now I'm sure there are good reasons for all this blue tape but I do wonder about where in Japan there is a warehouse full of the stuff that somebody ordered by mistake. Essentially this next step is the tedious bit of removing every single bit of plastic film covering and tape to set the printer up. You notice the rear tray here um, this is actually the second printer I've opened up and the first one the rear tray wasn't attached. Um, it does simply clip on some springs at the corners here but it should be attached but I just know that I had a printer where it wasn't. Take these little bits of foam out. They're everywhere but basically if it's coloured blue remove it few more bits inside. Uh, one of the bits of tape here holds the print head assembly in place and uh, that definitely needs removing if you intend to do any printing. This is where the inks are going to go. I've turned the print around because just for good measure there are some bits of tape at the back here. There we go, my bundle of sticky uh, just in case you're wondering, this is the roll paper holder, uh, which is covered in the review, looking at how that works. It folds away when not in use, and there is another piece of blue tape inside it. But anyway, this is where the roll paper goes. Folds in a way. Right, now everything is ready to go. Uh, control panel flips up like that. This is a touch screen. Main power button is here. One power lead. Let's start the printer up. I'm going to have to put the ink cartridges in here.
The printer's started up and first thing it wants to know is what language to use and uh, I will, for convenience, pick English. Um, it wants to know whether we're in daylight savings time, yes. F format. That's all you need to set up at this stage. The next part is the loading up the ink. It takes a while, which I'll show parts of. Anyway, there is a convenient how-to animated guide. Shows you how to do it. It now wants to install the ink cartridges. So, here we go. That tells me that the cover's open as if I didn't know. We just now need to put all the ink cartridges in. I'll just show the first one. And as I said, they happen to be in the order in the box that you need to install them. So this one, matte black, photo black, whatever. Just one of those little feature, but it just makes things a bit easier to do. Incidentally, this little panel here is the maintenance cartridge, which uh, you won't need to do anything yet, but is covered in the main review. These cartridges need a bit of shaking. Now, here are some I've shaken earlier. Cartridge just fits in the slot. Press it in roughly where the number is and you'll hear it lock clearly in place. And we now need to put the rest of them in. Notice they won't go in the wrong way. And the last two inks, the yellow and the violet. Uh, violet ink's a new colour of ink on Epson printers of this size. We have a total of 10 inks. Uh, matte black, photo black, no longer a need to physically switch them. Uh, the switching of cartridges went out a long while ago, but both inks are continuously enabled now, so no more need to switch inks when changing from matte to glossy papers. Um, that's the violet ink. We'll pop that in. Everything's in. Shut the covers. It's apparently recognizing the cartridges. While it's doing this, I'd note that I've already got finger marks on this clear plastic top here. Um, take care of it, it will scratch relatively easy. And it now is initialising, um, it will make assorted noises for about ooh, 15 minutes it says. So uh, don't worry, the video is not that long, I will skip it. One other thing to note during this process is do not ever lift any of the panels or do anything to the printer whilst it's gone through this initial installation stage. Um, I did this before on a printer by mistake and it restarted the initialization process. Uh, which will churn even more ink through the system to try and set it up. It basically goes back to the start. So leave well alone whilst it's doing all its stuff. There we go, 15 minutes passes and initialization is complete. Printer's now ready to use, ready to connect up to computer, do whatever you want. Let's just have a quick look. Main menu. 
ink levels. You will note perhaps how low all the ink levels are. Um, this is uh, an issue I cover in the review and you may well have with your P700 a spare maintenance cartridge since the process of uh, starting up has nearly filled the maintenance cartridge. Now Epson know about this and there will be firmware updates um, but as I addressed this in the main review so if you're concerned about ink levels do have a read of that. One of the things I do first usually before connecting the printer up is to see basically whether it works and to do that I'm going to print a, a nozzle check which is what you do normally if you've not used the printer for a while or if you were concerned that there were any clogs or anything like that. Now I need to set the paper type and the moment paper is detected and this is just a plain sheet of A4 it will ask me what the paper is. Uh, it thinks it's premium glossy at stud. Well it isn't that so we'll go to more paper types we'll go down the list we'll select plain paper that's selected plain bright white paper. Go to the menu, maintenance, print, nozzle check, add the paper, There is a light inside here, which I can't easily show in this setup, but this enables you to see the printing as it happens, which is quite useful. Here, one nozzle check, and fortunately, it's fine. So we can now move on to setting up the printer. The printer can be connected up several different ways. Um, this panel here folds down and has a USB socket and an Ethernet socket. Both are easy to use. The printer will detect these settings. The printer will, if you connect it on a network such as Ethernet here, make itself known so it's picked up by whatever computer you're installing stuff on. Uh, there's also wireless built in but uh, I'm not using the wireless connection here at the moment. Just using either the direct USB connection to the laptop or the network connection, which allows me to use the printer for, from any computer in the house. 